Hello everyone. I would like to welcome everyone, especially parents with newborn children and uh, those who are first time parents to my video blog, which is I'll be covering today's topic, which is weaning baby the Malaysian way. I find that a lot of Asian parents are actually clueless and in doubt, especially when it comes to weaning the baby. So they resort to looking at blogs and vlogs from foreign countries, from foreign experts, and also foreign parents who share their secrets and share their thoughts as well as their experiences with regards to weaning the baby. I find that it, it may not be appropriate, especially with regards to the food that they give or the food that they advise and also the practices that, they, that the Westerners actually practice may hold, not hold good to our beliefs and customs as well as the food may not be acceptable to our babies. So uh, today is my fervent hope to be able to teach you a little bit and to share my experience as a doctor and parent of three children about weaning your baby the Malaysian way. What is weaning? Well, weaning is a transition, a slow transition, I like to put it, when the baby is transitioned from fully milk meals to semi-solid or solid food. This transition has to be a very slow process such the baby can adapt both physically and emotionally. Now, a lot of grandparents or Malaysian parents do actually note that the baby feeds very well, especially when they take solids. I am doubtful when I ask them, oh, they are doing very well, they are drinking very well. Actually, again, the word is drinking very well. A lot of Malaysian parents do put cereals into the baby's milk and let the baby drink through the bottle and not do what is correctly done, which is to spoon feed the child by mixing proportion of cereal, the milk and water and feeding the baby through a spoon. Now the process of feeding the baby through a spoon is actually a three step process. One, the baby will take and sip the semi-solid food. They will tend to chew and gnaw and subsequently push the food onto the hard palate and back to the back of the mouth and swallow. Where else swallowing is just a one step process. So we need to be able to teach the baby to feed, especially the babies who are just starting to feed correctly so that they do not swallow, just learn to swallow, but to actually feed. Now, a lot of par parents do ask me whether it is wise to put sugary food, sugary, uh, sugary substances into their bottle feed and feed the babies, for instance, sugar water and also fruit juices. The answer is no. The idea if we were to feed the baby using this form of method of putting sugary water into the bottle and letting the baby suck, ultimately, one, the baby would actually get tooth decay in time to come. And also the baby will be attracted to drinking rather than to actually eating using a spoon. The weaning process will be lost. So for children, I would advise fluids, especially if you are weaning, you need to take some water, some sort of water, because you will be reduced in milk once you start solid feed. Drinking would mean either using a sipper cup or using an open mouth cup, a regular open mouth cup. Which do I prefer? I guess the preference would be an open cup. Number one, an open cup helps the, ba the baby transition from cup to cups and cups to straw, where else the sipper cup will actually prevent this skill because the baby tends to suck. So it doesn't move on. It doesn't move on to the next stage of weaning. Number two, 
a lot of babies learn to suck but do not be because through the sepal cup and actually do not and do not have a proper facial development because the sucking is still again from the sepal cup is almost similar to taking through the bottle number three it also impedes speech development because the facial muscles the throat muscles are not well formed whereas if you use an open cup it teaches the the child to be able to close the lips fully and ultimately take small slips of water and that hence prevent choking the question in everyone's mind is when to start feeding the weaning should start at six months as recommended by the british and american pediatric association a lot of our patients in malaysia are always starting to wean at four months we find that because of the immune system which is not well developed they tend to get stomach and lung infections when they are introduced to foreign food second their digestive and kidneys are not well matured if your digestive tracts is not well matured hence the, we are not able to digest the food fully hence absorption of the food will be de decreased leading to malnutrition as well as our kidneys we will not be able the baby will not be able to remove the byproducts of solid food which is not needed hence may cause some kidney or renal injuries there also is a risk higher risk of allergies such as asthma and eczema if you expose our child to small amounts of allergic food too early in their life so it's also good to actually prolong or delay the weaning to six months now the better child will actually attain better oral motor skills so that the chances of gagging vomiting and choking is much less however if a lot of us would ask would it be better if i would delay to eight to ten months i would not actually recommend that because any delay further than six months would actually cause some nutritional deficiencies and because milk alone does not cannot support the nutritional the nutrition needs of the baby at six months old and if you delay later in life the baby would have difficulty in feeding and maybe a fussy baby with difficulty in eating later in life what are the stages of weaning the stage of weaning come is three stages the three the first stage is feeding the caretakers or the parents feeding the child with a spoon with different textures of food which is mashed pureed to blended to more solid food and help the baby chew the second stage is the baby has better hand coordination now is able to pick up his own food and feed themselves which we call finger food the third is allowing the baby to use a spoon to eat lumpy foods on their own so these stages are gradual so it should not be forced onto the babies let that let them run its course it's actually very rewarding if we do a we, we do it right if we win the baby right it's very rewarding the most we can see that we get a very beautiful baby a beautiful baby with no allergies a baby with who doesn't reject milk as well as solids while accepting the solids and also a baby who has no constipation and also diarrhea when is the baby ready each baby is an individual each baby will have its own time they will inform you it's not that we which we should not under duress force them to eat they only will be ready when they are ready there are criteria that suggest they are ready would be one they are able to sit when propped up in a sitting position with their holding their head straight up if they can hold their straight head straight up hence this shows that they won't choke or they won't choke while they're eating secondly is that baby tends to be irritable and wakes up often 
looking for bottle feed, they want more and more. Shows that the bottle feed does not sustain them enough. They feel hungry all the time. The third is that baby shows interest in what we eat, especially when you're on the table. So that is also another sign. As also the baby would tend to put things into the mouth and you notice there's a lot of drooling of saliva. Uh, these are the signs that the baby is ready. Now, we also try to test by putting our finger into the, the baby's mouth to see whether the trusting reflex of the tongue is still present. Is as a protective mechanism, the trusting of the tongue is to prevent things from entering the mouth when they are young. Hence, to protect the, the things and foreign objects from entering the mouth. It should be lost if the baby is able to eat. If the baby still has this trusting reflex, then we may delay the weaning. Things we need during the weaning. A high chair with support. We do not expect the baby to sit on its own at six months. So hence, the support with using pillows and roll-up towels to make sure the baby is comfortably propped up at end. The, tab the, the table should be able, we are supposed to be able to sit on the chair. This actually encourages the baby to eat on the same time, at the same time, in the same place, hence instilling a discipline in eating. So the baby understands that if I sit on this chair, it's only to eat and it's not to play. It also, looking at the tray, the tray will be used again when the baby is eating finger food. We will place objects of food onto the tray and the baby will pick it up on their own. The second thing we need, of course, would be a bowl and a spoon. The spoon has to be a shallow spoon, in a shallow spoon, not too deep, so that baby's mouth and not too small, not too big, so that it can actually fit just nicely, snugly tight into the baby's mouth, so that the baby can be able to eat. It has to be soft. It has to be uh, rounded and not sharp as to hurt the baby. And of course, things will get messy. So you need a good beat. And you can also place a little bit of towels or newspaper around the chair when you start feeding. It is a messy affair, but it's a very rewarding affair. And it is a natural, natural affair. You should let the baby try, even though it is going to be messy. Now parents always ask me what is the secret of feeding or weaning. There are certain guidelines that we need to follow. Is it that when we start semi-solids or solid food, we forego milk? No, of course not. Milk, may be breast or formula milk, is still the most important meal of the day. You can, baby still needs 500 to 600 meals per day of milk, okay, which is roughly 220 to 25 ounces per day and these will actually just uh, always think of weaning solid food as just a complementary to the main meal with ultimately our aim is to slowly transition from milk to solid but never forgo the milk we also like to introduce one new food at a time giving the baby the same amount of food same food for the next three to five or five to seven days before introducing another new food. This is to let the baby know what the baby is eating, the texture, the taste, as not to confuse the baby. And also we like to see whether the baby has any allergies. Now the allergies that we are looking for is of course, rashes around the mouth, hives or articular rash, looking for vomiting and diarrhea. So these are the signs that we look for before we start off with another new food. So we always make a record of what we feel that the baby likes and what the baby don't like. So at the end of the day, when we want to reintroduce this in a meal, in a proper meal, we know what to omit and what to add on. Now, how much is enough? In as Malaysian parents or as Asian parents, we always like to give a lot. 
we need the baby to feed until they are very, very full. The idea is, again, it's a complementary meal, complements the milk. So we start off with very small aliquots of half, one teaspoon or half a tablespoon and go slowly increasing in amount each time offering only what the baby wants and not forcing what we want the baby to eat. Now when do we start? What's the best time to start? Yes, the best time to start is early in the morning. No, that is when the baby is most vulnerable and most hungry. They will not accept new things. What is best is that when the baby wakes up, give some milk to reduce the hunger pangs, which is occurring the whole night because the baby hasn't taken the food for the whole night. So it's always good to start off with a milk meal. Subsequently, maybe we make it brunch 11 to 12. We start off before the baby goes to for a bath. We, we start off with a small weaning solid milk. Now, what if the baby does not like the milk? Does it mean that the baby is allergic to the milk? Are you going to be so? Are you going to be passionate to push the baby to to continue the feed or just give it up? My idea is to actually try to incorporate what the baby is used to by adding on milk into the solid. So the baby would get a little bit of sense of familiarity, hence the rejection would be less. And at, at some point of time, they are able to accept the new taste. Or you can stop and come back to it the next time around. Are we going to settle for the easy route out? Buying things from the supermarket, Tesco, Sunshine, Giant? Or are we going to go for organic food, non-conventional, more for us, it is up, us, up to us to, de to decide. For me, I would rather prefer we start with organic single grain cereal. Now, why organic, you may ask? Organic is basically a blend form of a grain which is processed in such a way that is easily digestible. It is powdered form. You just have to make milk and water. It's easy to prepare. It is not added with any other vitamins. It is just basically the grain being pounded into powder. Why do you ask, why is it better than conventional cereals? In conventional cereals, so one may argue, oh, these conventional cereals They've added in multivitamins, probiotics, DHA. Wouldn't that be better than just plain old grain? The answer is basics is always good. We have to start with the basics before we can actually graduate to more complex food. The basics will tell us whether we are allergic to anything. By mixing too many things into one cereal, first you complicate things when the baby doesn't accept, doesn't digest, and gets allergy. So always start with single grain, brown rice or white rice. That would be the first choice of greens that I would choose. Now why processed food is always mom's choice? It's easy to buy, it's attractive, it had least down all the minerals, all the vitamins, all the benefits in each bottle. It promises that. However, for me, I find it hard to believe when they write there, there's no preservatives and yet, and it's not a processed food, it's natural. Can you imagine a natural food on a shelf in a supermarket or in a, in a go-down or it lasting for months to years? 
without being a processed, preservative-free food. I doubt it. I, on the other hand, would prefer freshly made food. Now the reason is being, it is difficult to say, especially for children or babies, infants, to actually differentiate the different tastes, individual tastes of the food when the food combines two to three ingredients at one time. Some may combine ham and turkey, some may combine orange and apple, some may combine peas with sweet potatoes, hence it loses the natural organic taste of each ingredient. Secondly, it is difficult to differentiate or detect what is the cause of allergies or side effects such as vomiting when you combine too many ingredients, a varied group of ingredients into one small bottle. The third is it is not possible to not have additives like sugar and salt in the food itself, making the food so nice, so tasteful that the baby loves it. Hence, what is the best food? Food is what is best is prepared fresh. Now, preparing fresh food, which is least allergic, would be starting with, the wisest choice would be starting with vegetables. Vegetables, which is, I would like to choose vegetables which has a little bit of texture and has a little bit of starch which first the baby will learn to chew and it fills the tummy just a little bit. So you prepare the choice of vegetables that you want, wash it well, rinse it well, blender it and steam it. I always prepare a certain amount of food, a certain amount at the same time. So as first is economical, is wise time management and keep the food frozen for up to seven days. Each remembering to only give one vegetables at a time. You can actually simply blend it. You can actually smash it. We can actually grate it. We can actually slice or chop it after which we are going to steam it to soft pureed consistency, paste like. We can put it either in individual small plastic cups or one huge container or we can actually put it in a conventional ice cube maker or ice cube tray. How long? It depends on you three to five, five to seven days, it doesn't, it doesn't matter, it depends on you. Like I said, always start with vegetables that you think is, first of all, organic, pesticide free, locally available, economical, and it has to be a little bit starchy and a little bit sweet, so the baby can accept a little bit of texture when they bite into the vegetables. I really re rarely use uh, leafy vegetables because they don't have the texture and starch. Hence, the baby may not be able to actually chew. You actually, again, you do not get to what you aim for. The able to baby able to chew and slowly chew and slowly swallow. Now, the vegetables that I usually choose would be broccoli peas, potato, sweet potato, yam, avocado, cauliflower, carrots, and pumpkin. Now notice I put I always say pumpkin and carrot to the last. I save it to the last is because they are rather sweet vegetables. Sweet vegetables tend to confuse your baby. They tend to lead to a baby who is fussy about 
sweetness. They tend to like more sweet vegetables. Puree them and give daily for a couple of days. What about meats, you may ask? It's a little bit controversial when starting on meats. A lot of people have the perception that meats are, and because of the high proteins may not be digestible for some children. We bear in mind, we actually do use meat in preparation of porridge in, as, as we Asians do as, at about eight to nine months. So we need to actually introduce meat early. Now we can actually blend and puree up the milk, uh, the meat, starting with white meat, chicken maybe, maybe grab it. Later on, maybe to more red, redder meats like mutton, venison, and beef. I would not advise to use fish. Fish is more allergic, so we may have to put it on hold for the moment. We have talked about giving cereal, we have talked about giving vegetables, we have talked about giving meat. Next, to complete the whole meal cycle, we have to have some fruits. Now, to have a balanced diet, we can start with fruits. But mind you, if we start on fruits too early, we find that babies tend to have diarrhea. So instead, we come to a balance, we start on fruit juices. Dilute fruit juices will be the best. Now, in Asian countries, we do have the myth that citrus fruits are tend to be a little bit more allergic, hence causing phlegm and coughing. In actual fact, they are allergic. Citrus fruits like apple, uh, lemon, red apples, kiwi, oranges, grapefruits, tend to be a little bit more allergic, causing rashes. Strawberries, blackberries, blueberries are also more allergic. Grapes too fall in this category. So what choices do you have? We have red apple, mango, papaya, peck and pear, carrot, and also note that dragon fruit is not too bad. We need to blend, we need to sieve, and we need to mix with water to dilute it so that the taste, the sweetness is slightly reduced, slightly reduced as to prevent baby to be too dependent on sugar. As Asians, we do not have the luxury of introducing many types of food especially for those who are eight months, nine months old. We always have to fall back on our Asian porridge. Unlike our Western counterparts, they introduce pastas, pizzas, custards. I think it is not very acceptable when it comes to Malaysian or Asian parents. So what is the secret of making a good porridge? A good porridge should have few ingredients. The ingredients that usually the Asian parents will always use would be the white rice as the main grain. I find the white rice or polished rice has got very minimal benefits, nutritional benefits. It has is very starchy, it's high glycemic index, making the child very Pudgy, very fat, and it lacks amino acids. So, what are the greens that we should use? Would be discussed. For me, I usually use three to four greens. We have got many, many greens which you can combine to make up to 20 greens, 30 greens, but I usually like the four basic greens. The four basic greens are basically one brown rice, quinoa, millet, and buckwheat. These are greens which has nutritional values which complements each other. Hence, if we combine them, they will be a complete meal. Now, 
The only setback is that these grains have bitter aftertaste. It is coarse, it is not easy to digest, and it's not easy to take, it's not palatable. Why? Babies tend to have a better understanding of food and their, be and their taste buds are more developed now. In order to overcome this problem, we should, number one, wash and before boiling the we, we are the, the grains, we have to wash them properly by actually immersing them in hot water, subsequently using a sieve and running water, rinse it well, then subsequently, only then can we start cooking. We take the four green, wash rice, right, rinse, four greens, washed and clean. We will blend the four greens with water to a very smooth consistency. We either double boil them or we can use a slow cooker to make sure the texture is really soft. We always can add on proteins, meats like chicken, pork, venison, beef, mutton, but as a block just for the taste. I rather not means it yet for the moment. Two, of course, we need to add on vegetables. Now, the vegetables that usually we add on would be two types. One, the green leafy vegetables, spinach. We can use emperors, the emperor vegetables, lettuce, salad, broccoli, asparagus. Is entirely up to you. Next, we should have the yellow or orange component. Tomatoes, carrots, pumpkin, papaya. These will produce good a balance of vitamins. Namely, the greens will provide selenium, magnesium, iron, while the orange colored vegetables will provide the rest vitamin B complexes, as well as vitamin A. You get a very balanced diet. Now, what about oils, you ask me? I usually prefer to use coconut virgin oil and flaxseed oil. A lot of my parents have started using avocado oil and macadamia oil. We will discuss why we do not prefer tree nut oils later on. Now, when your baby is already seven months to eight months, when the baby can sit up on their own, it is time for them to explore. This is the time where the hand-eye coordination is good. The baby can reach out and take food into the mouth. This is the time to sit them up. Now you don't have to prop them up anymore. But still, remember, on the high chair, place things, edible, small strips of food, which doesn't break off into small big chunks chunks that can choke the child. It has to be in small strips, easy to bite size, and easy bite size, and it's easy to, to be mesh in the mouth. Now things that we start off would be raw cucumber sticks, either steamed or baked, small fruits like pears in strips, apples, bananas, nectarines, mango, melon, all preferably with the skin removed. It should be too, shouldn't be too mushy, it shouldn't be too hard. You have to strike a good balance as the texture comes. If you're talking, talking about texture, you have to strike a good balance. You can also have soft cooked vegetables like carrots, parsnips, baby corn, turnips, cauliflower, broccoli, beetroot. Others would be proteins like cooked chicken breast or ground beef. We can also give puff dried cereal. When it mixes with saliva, it becomes very soft, right? We also can give tofu, sti tofu sticks and lightly, braised, lightly toasted bread sticks. These are finger foods that I mentioned earlier. As the big baby gets more confident and you are confident that the baby is 
confident enough to feed themselves, we can introduce teething biscuits. This is when the baby has more teeth and can chew and gnaw. It helps one to build a better facial muscles. Help the baby when the facial muscles and throat muscles are well formed, the baby can phonate or can talk better. And also the most important is that the baby when it has teeth, they do have teething problems and you can start them off on teething biscuits. Again, fruits would come into play again. Now, the fruits is no more fruit juices. You can give whole fruits, which is soft. Let the baby again eat the fruits on their own. Some like to puree again to make it very thick and the baby eats with a spoon. Some parents like to grate it to make it into small, small pieces, thin, thin slices. Some would like to give the child whole food, whole fruits. So it depends on how confident your baby is again. It is individualized. Parents are always very concerned about the taste of the baby, of the food the baby takes. For me, concern about taste, it should be irrelevant. The baby taste bud is developing, but it's not to the stage that he can actually taste and tell you this is mm, fine cuisine, not so good cuisine. No. If you are given a choice, if your baby is given a choice of added addition of salt and sugar to, to make the food taste better, it's obvious the baby would choose to have a tastier meal. If the baby is not given this choice, hence the baby would not be able to choose. Choosers, it would be a good choice not to add on any sugar or salt. Salts, if the kidneys are not well developed, they cannot remove the additional salt that we add on. It may lead to kidney failure at some point of time. Again, sugar causes tooth decays. So we try to prevent this by prolonging at the addition of sugar and salt to much later in life, 15, 16 months, that is not an issue. There are many, many types of food that can cause allergy in a child. Being Asians, we tend to feed our child table food, food that we eat, either as a reflex, either consciously or unconsciously, when the baby cries, as the baby sits on our main table, we tend to feed a little bit of things that we eat. They look cute when they cry for food or they, they bake for food. And we tend to, be, we, we tend to let, uh, let ourselves forget that they cannot digest or consume food that we eat. So it's always best to remember that we, as a babies, will not be able to tolerate things like chili, coffee or tea or honey at this point of time.
No. Food that we choose should not endanger our child physically. Th things that can cause the child to choke or gag should not be on the menu. Now things that is round, things that can get stuck into the throat, like hot dogs, like popcorn, grapes, peanuts, raw carrots which is hard, it can actually bite off and a bite the baby can bite off a piece and it just enters to the throat rather than the esophagus. So try to avoid foods that are dangerous physically that can cause choking.